There are moments, drifting above the English landscape, where scale quietly overwhelms you. It's January, a winter's day in the Cone Valley. The trees below are stripped back to their essentials. Bare, dark, skeletal. The land feels paused, waiting. And cutting across it all, with unapologetic confidence, is something altogether different. This is the Cone Valley Viaduct. Three and a half kilometres of concrete, steel, ambition and controversy. On a day like this, the viaduct reveals its true character. Its pale concrete stands out starkly against the winter landscape. Almost bone white, unsoftened by leaves or summer colour, the surrounding trees, reduced to dark frameworks, mirror it, branch for rib, peer for spine. Man-made and natural suddenly speak the same language. From the air, the structure of spears austere, elegant, yes, but also exposed, a long linear form laid bare beneath a heavy sky. Low cloud presses down on the valley, and yet, occasionally, light breaks through. Thin patches of brightness sweep across the bridge, briefly animating it before drifting on. Without that light, this place would feel bleak, and perhaps that feels fitting, because this is not just an engineering project, it's a national argument, poured into concrete. The Colne Valley Viaduct is the longest railway bridge ever built in Britain. It carries high speed too across one of the most environmentally sensitive landscapes in southern England. When operational, trains here will cross at 200 miles per hour, barely registering the valley beneath them. Speed at this scale demands absolute precision. The viaduct stretches for 3.4 kilometres, supported by 56 slender piers, each one carefully positioned to thread through lakes, wetlands and woodland. In winter, their spacing becomes clearer. Nothing is hidden. Every decision is visible. Over a thousand bespoke concrete segments were required to build this bridge each weighing up to 140 tonnes, cast elsewhere, transported here, and assembled mid-air using a vast launching girder, inching forwards across the valley like a slow mechanical creature. Segment by segment, the viaduct was pushed out over the water and land, hovering above habitats that have existed for centuries. It is engineering as surgery, precise, clinical, unforgiving, but surgery always leaves scars. The Cone Valley Regional Park is not empty countryside. It is a living system, lakes born of old gravel pits, ancient hedgerows, protected bird species, bats, and waterways feeding the Thames. In summer, this place feels abundant. In winter, it feels vulnerable. HS2 argues that a viaduct is the least harmful option, that lifting the railway above the land allows wildlife and water to move beneath it, that habitats have been recreated, corridors installed, and noise carefully controlled. Critics remain unconvinced. They argue that no amount of mitigation replaces what was lost. That concrete, however carefully shaped, does not belong here. And that the sheer scale of the project exposes a deeper problem. Not of design, but of judgement. By 2026, HS2's estimated cost has risen beyond £100 billion a number so vast it almost defies comprehension. And yet, here it is. Solid, physical, unavoidable. 
The original vision of HS2 has been pared back. Eastern legs cancelled. Northern ambitions reduced. What remains are structures like this. Monumental, permanent and impossible to ignore. Supporters see long-term thinking. Infrastructure designed for the next century, not the next election. Reduced congestion, lower emissions, skills and experience that will outlast this controversy. Opponents see something else entirely. A project that grew too large to stop. A budget that escaped control. And a landscape asked to pay the price. From above, on a winter's day, it's hard to take sides. The viaduct is undeniably beautiful in its own way. Its curves are restrained, its piers redefined. There is an attempt here. Genuine, perhaps, to show respect. But winter is honest. Without leaves, without colour, without distraction. The bridge stands exposed. A white, bony form cutting through a darkened valley. It does not hide. It does not apologise. Soon, trains will cross the valley in minutes. Passengers will glance out at the view if they look up at all. Few will think about the cost. Few still about the arguments that unfold beneath these clouds. But for now, in January, the question hangs in the cold air. Was this the right solution? Was the price worth paying? And will time soften this structure, or simply make it permanent? The Cone Valley Viaduct does not answer those questions. It simply stands. Pale against the winter landscape. Confident. Colossal. A grand design in every sense of the phrase. I hope you've enjoyed the series so far. As always, please like, subscribe and share. Thank you. <laughs>